Hi, welcome to Matter and Energy Part 1. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about an introduction to matter and energy. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what is chemistry, mass, volume, and density, states of matter, matter represented by particle diagrams, particle diagrams and phases of matter, physical properties and physical change, and finally, chemical properties and chemical change. So what is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of nature of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. So now, what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and volume. Can either be a pure substance or a mixture of substances. Mass is defined as the amount of material in an object and it's always measured in grams or kilograms depending on your situation. Volume is the amount of space that an object occupies. The unit of volume of a liquid is the liter. The unit of volume of a solid is cubic centimeters, as represented right here. The density formula is found on your region's reference table. Density is the ratio of mass to volume, and we use the formula density is equal to mass over volume. Something that has a large density or very dense means that the particles are closely packed together, while something that has a small density means that the particles are not packed closely together. Let's look at a density problem. An apple has a mass of 35 grams and a volume of 10 centimeters cubed. What is the density of the apple? The first thing that we're going to do is write out our formula. So density is equal to mass over volume. The mass of our apple is 35 grams. The volume of our apple is 10 centimeters cubed. So if I divide 35 by 10, I get 3.5 grams per centimeters cubed. There are three different types of states of matter that we look at in this course. A solid has a particular shape and a definite volume. A liquid has no particular shape but does have a definite volume. And finally, a gas has no particular shape or volume and we can see our three examples below. Now let's look at how matter is represented by particle diagrams. Matter can be represented by the use of particle diagrams. Particle diagrams can represent the difference between a single atom and an element versus a compound. So a representation of a particle diagram of an atom might be this red sphere or this clear sphere right here. A particle diagram of a compound could have the red sphere overlapping the clear spheres to represent a bond. Notice here that the circles are overlapping rather than a single circle. Like I said before, the overlapping indicates that a bond is present in the compound. Particle diagrams can also differentiate between phases of matter. Here we have the particle diagram of an element as a solid. For a representation of a solid phase diagram, the circles will either be all touching or only with a little bit of room in between them. So this right here would represent a solid. They might not be perfectly touching, but for the most part, they are representing atoms that are next to each other that are closely packed together. We'd also say that this is a pure substance since all of the spheres represent the same type of atom because they're all the same type of color. Here we have a particle diagram of an element that's representing a liquid. For a representation of a liquid phase diagram, the circles will have more room between them and will not be touching. Although, it, of course, it is possible for a couple to touch, but for the most part, they won't be touching. The particles will appear to be more random and not as organized as in the solid phase diagram. So this is how we would represent a liquid using particle diagrams. Now we have the particle diagram of an element as a gas. Notice here, for a representation of a gas phase diagram, only a few particles will be represented because we're assuming that the rest of the particles that we saw in the previous diagram are now out of our box, out of the picture. The particles will appear very, very random with a lot of space in between each one. So again, this is our representation of a phase diagram representing gases. A physical property is the characteristics of matter that can be observed without without altering its chemical identity. So examples of physical properties are things like density, color, melting point, and texture. 
When matter undergoes a physical change, its chemical identity is unchanged, so we're not changing the chemical composition, and the substance only looks different. So examples of physical changes could be crushing, tearing, changes in state, such as freezing, melting, vaporization. These all represent physical change. A chemical property is defined as the characteristics of matter that can only be observed when you change its chemical identity. So for example, how flammable something is or how a piece of metal rusts. A chemical change will result in the formation of a different substance with properties different than the original piece of matter. Chemical changes might include wood burning, iron rusting, cooking an egg, food being broken down by salivary amylase during digestion, water being split into hydrogen and oxygen atoms. These are all examples of chemical changes. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We went over the basics of what is chemistry. We talked about mass volume density and did a little example. We talked about different states of matter, how matter is represented by particle diagrams, particle diagrams and phases of matter, physical properties and physical change, chemical properties and chemical change. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.